this film just kind of jumps into it, and I'm going to do the same here, Wad, and and ask you about your training. As we meet you here, you're just kind of in it. You're filming everything. But what first drew you to filming? And, and I understand you're pretty much self-taught. Uh, yeah, as it was just uh, the fact that there's not a lot of people who are really journalists and can t can be in the same place where we were as an activist. Uh, so we just felt that this is kind of the responsibility that we have as well as we protesting, but also to document this minutes, which is from the beginning was like, it wasn't, I had no idea about what I will, why I will use this footage, but I know that this is just important. And that's like, continuing with me the whole time until the last minute of the film. Uh, all the time that I have that idea that I will not be survive. And like every minute, it's the last minute. So I should just keep filming and keep gathering this footage. Hopefully that one day someone will like take this footage and make um, something with, with it. Edwards, can you tell us a little bit about your personal background with Syria and what compelled you to want to make a film about it? Well, uh, I've been making documentaries for 12 years about all sorts of different conflict zones around the world, Afghanistan, Yemen, um, different places. But when the Syrian revolution started, it just felt that that was something completely different uh, in the sense that in Syria, what you had was people like these amazing two people here, um, fundamentally middle class, educated, secular people who were peacefully protesting for basic rights and values that we all take for granted. And they were being met with the most horrendous and ferocious military force, the full military power of a nation state. And they continued peacefully protesting for months and months and months. And watching from afar, I just felt this was an extraordinary moment in human history, really, a moment of great courage and great dignity on the part of the Syrian people. And so, yeah, so I just really wanted to make a film about them. Uh, but this was my first opportunity to. I tried to do it. I was stopped at the border a couple of times. I made a film about ISIS, um, uh, but it was really this, I felt like all the work I've done was building up to the moment of meeting these two and supporting WAD in particular and Hamza as well to tell their story and do justice to it. Do you remember the first footage that you saw of what she had shot and what maybe struck out to you is this is going to be, because there have been plenty of documentaries made about places that are experiencing crisis, but very few that are done like this, just the, the genuineness of it and the intimacy of it. Yeah, I mean, some of her stuff have been on the news already. So uh, like two of the scenes that appear in the film, the three brothers was the first thing I ever saw of her footage. And I think that was a moment when just people minds around the world were blown basically because not only was it such a terrible story but it was filmed with such uh, tenderness and emotional connection and sort of beauty and realism and yeah it just in that one scene it really brought home the conflict I think to so many of us and that was all thanks to her. But there is something different, and I think what makes this film so different is that it's it's your experience as a mother, and it's those scenes not only with your child, but the other children. When did it kind of become clear in your mind that that was the perspective that you wanted to take in this documentary, that it was for Sama? Uh, when I was shooting that, I had no idea about like how, what I will do with this footage, or at that time also I wasn't had uh, any connection with anyone outside like to say that I'm doing this and not doing this so I was just like keep filming and capturing these moments and feel the the um, I was just trying to really see how I will how I'm feeling this and how I really wanted just to be captured uh, so during the time as any mom, mom around the world I when I had when I was pregnant I was speaking to to my daughter when I, she was like just one month or three months, I was like speaking with her as any mom around the world. And the scene when I was like telling Hamza in the mirror I'm pregnant, it's I think every mom have <laughs> some kind of this crazy things about how she will tell her partner about that. And I just felt that this minutes is really important for me, even if I wasn't in Aleppo. But when I was in Aleppo, it was like much, much, much higher f as a feeling. And then when we were, uh, after I left, and then I met Edward, and we decided to work this film together. And two, 
to third from the bro process when we decided that th this film sh like should be something really different. We started as a, a chronologically way uh, to understand the story and even for me because I was too involved from the beginning until the end and even we've, uh, we've were just f uh, left uh, one or three months from Aleppo, so I was also like very emotional uh, re related to the story. So uh, when when we decided about like making two for, for Sama, we were just thinking about how we can, um, it's something Edward always saying, and I will steal this from steal you, it. sorry. It's yeah, <laughs> he was always saying like something like the, the material will tell you what, what it's want to be. The film will speak to you, but it just, takes time until we will understand that. And it takes just like two years, <laughs> not too much. <laughs> but it's just, it was really clear. After we decided it will be for Sama, you've seen that everything was like coming around the idea because like suddenly it's just what it should be begin from the beginning. Hamza, can you talk a little bit about what you hope this film will bring to people living here in this country, what you hope they'll take away from it? Actually, there were like s the first and most important thing for everyone that will see the story and hoping that it will might change the narrative about the the Syrians uh, who are in Syria, like having the conflict now inside Syria, or the Syrian refugees. This this story is still happening on daily basis. In in the last three months, more than twenty six hospitals were targeted in Idlib, and yesterday. Uh, 53 people were killed in one city in uh, also close to to Idlib called Marat called Marat Norman. So and uh, I think nobody heard this in, in in the news because in in the narrative that we had that the ISIS has ended and the war against on ISIS has finished and Syria now is a safe place so everybody can just jump in and go back and that's it. While the situation as you have seen is 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 not like this. Uh, it, it wasn't, ISIS was like a very like brutal and, and evil uh, part of, of, of the situation in Syria, of course, but it wasn't all about ISIS. And hoping that by, by sharing this, this story sometime, one day, like maybe one government may take a stand and bring justice to, to the people. It might be not in the near future, but maybe like it will, I believe that the accountability will happen and justice will, will happen. One of the things that I think we all hope as well that people take away and speaking as a, a British person, I think it's very easy for people in Britain and America, you know, and in the West, I guess, to look at places like Syria and say, oh, that's happening to the other, you know, it's sort of, oh, the Middle East, there's always war, there's always chaos, like nothing can be done. And, you know, you wring your hands, but feel that somehow we can sit in our countries and say, well, it's terrible what's happening over there, but, you know, we're over here. And I think what you see when you look at Syria, you begin to realize that the things in our countries, you know, the the effect on our politics, the, when you think about what the refugee crisis and what ISIS have done to our politics, which are affecting us now, that all flowed out of Syria. And fundamentally, you know, our failure to kind of support our fellow human beings who were suffering in that way. And I think that is one of the big things that we hope to take away is the fact that we no longer live in a world where we're okay and they're not. We have this shared humanity, we have this connection between us all, and we're all in it together, basically, to try and make our world just, you know, to turn turn it around, I guess, from this dark period we're going through. To see this extraordinary reaction, and we've taken it all around the world. We took it to Cannes, we've taken it to Nantucket, we took it to Sheffield, it's gone to Munich. Yeah. And we've had this reaction, a positive reaction everywhere, and it really just gives you hope you know, that people, they still care. Yeah. <laughs> like, we were told that fatigue would be, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, exactly as you said. Like, people are done with Syria and, you know, they've seen it all and whatever. But these guys' stories and what WAD captured in her camera has just got this force to punch through. They are inspirational. Edward Watts and WAD and Hamza Al-Khatib, thank you so much.